Well, it's time to stretch your legs and take a walk in the park. The sun is shining, and you enjoy the weather and life on the whole. That's when you spot a rapidly growing vertical cloud. Bright white at first, it's approaching alarmingly fast, becoming dense and inky. The sky is darkening, and a gust of wind blows the hat off your head. And then, your hair starts to stand on end. That's your cue to run for your life. You're about to be hit by lightning. At this very moment, positive charges are rising through your body. They're reaching toward the negatively charged part of the storm. If you don't react fast, these charges will meet, and it'll end badly for you. If there's nowhere you can hide, crouch down and try to make yourself smaller than the objects around you. Don't lie flat on the ground. It may be wet and thus a great conductor of electricity. There are also other signs that scream danger during a lightning storm. Your palms may begin to sweat. You might hear bizarre crackling, buzzing, or vibrating sounds coming from metal objects nearby. Your skin can start to tingle. There might be a strange metallic taste in your mouth. If you're sure you're not chewing on tinfoil, then look out. Plus, you're likely to smell chlorine. That's ozone. Electrical charges split the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the main gases forming the atmosphere, into separate atoms. When these atoms come together again, some of them produce molecules made up of three oxygen atoms. That's ozone. You can smell it during a thunderstorm because downdrafts bring it from high altitudes to your nose level. You can figure out how close a thunderstorm is by measuring the time between spotting the lightning and hearing the thunder. Every five seconds is one mile. The sky over your head is darkening and turning ominously green. Something hits you on the cheek. Ouch, it hurts. You pick up the offending object. It's a massive hailstone. But it's not that cold outside, and it's not raining. You notice how still everything is, how quiet. There's no wind whatsoever. It makes you think about the calm before the storm. And indeed, soon you hear some noise. It's approaching rapidly and turns into a loud roar, as if a freight train is moving towards you. Only, it's not a train. It's a tornado, and you have almost no time to escape. The funnel isn't visible behind a cloud of debris, but you can't mistake this rotating column of air for anything else. If the tornado catches you on the road, get as far from your car as you can. This will prevent the vehicle from being hurtled toward you. Find a ditch, lie down in it, and cover your head. If you're inside, get away from windows and hide underground if possible. Now, you're at the seaside, walking along the shore and enjoying a light breeze. Suddenly, the ground starts shaking under your feet. Must be an earthquake! The next weirdness you notice is the water retreating from the beach at breakneck speed. It leaves behind the exposed ocean floor, reefs, and even fish. That's when you hear a distant roaring sound. It's a tsunami, and you only have a few minutes to save your life. Get to high ground immediately! A giant wave is already speeding toward the shore. It's not the only way a tsunami can creep up on you. It doesn't necessarily come crashing against the shore as a series of huge waves. A tsunami can look like a rapidly rising tide. It usually goes hand-in-hand with severe underwater turbulence. It pulls people under the surface and tosses heavy objects around. You can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami's coming. Your dog's restless. It's scratching the entrance door, roaming around the apartment, and trying to hide in the corner. Usually calm and docile, the pooch is now howling and barking. The weather's also been crazy for the past several days. It's hot one day and chilly 24 hours later. Plus, you've noticed that the stream near your house has livened up, bubbling as it's rushing past. Only when glasses start to clink in your cupboard do you realize what it means. The clatter is produced by foreshocks, tiny earthquakes leading up to the main event. Earthquakes often occur in clusters. If there are several weak quakes, a much bigger one might be on the way. Sometime before the disaster strikes, you might notice bizarre blue lights. Some of them seem to be coming from the ground, others are hovering in the air. These are so-called earthquake lights. Emitted from rocks under great stress, they can be seen days or mere seconds before the ground starts shaking. At the same time, some experts doubt earthquake lights exist. 
If you think an earthquake is about to happen and there's a catfish in your aquarium, pay attention to its behavior. Scientists have proved this species can react to earth tremors. The fish become restless when seismic activity is high. Some bugs can feel a storm coming. They get ready for the natural disaster by stopping any movement. That's why, if you notice that lots of insects around you look drowsy, search for shelter. As for bees, they can predict heavy rainstorms. They begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining. Square waves occur when two wave patterns crash into each other. This phenomenon looks awesome, but only if you're watching it from the shore. Don't even think of getting in the water to play in such waves. In that place, there are cross currents that can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the surface. And if you see wild choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed, stay out of the water too. It can be a sign of a strong rip current. It can carry you far away from the ocean. If you see smelly green stuff on the surface of a lake or sea, stay away from the water. It can be a hazardous algal bloom. You won't be able to tell whether it's toxic or not at first sight. That's why it's better to steer clear of it altogether. Three or four days before a hurricane arrives, the sea or ocean surface can swell up to 6 feet. Waves hit the shore every 9 seconds. The closer the hurricane, the more rapidly the waves crash against the shore. They also get higher, sometimes up to 16 feet. The sky is littered with light, fluffy clouds. Roughly 36 hours before the hurricane reaches the shore, the atmospheric pressure begins to drop. After that, the wind speeds up. Wispy, hair-like clouds appear in the sky. 18 hours before the hurricane makes it to the shore, the sky opens up and it starts to pour. The rainwater often floods low-lying areas, welling up to 15 feet. When the hurricane is 12 hours away, a powerful gale starts to bring along loose debris. Six hours before the landfall, the wind speed is already 90 miles per hour. It's strong enough to break and even uproot trees, fling around large debris, and flip cars. By the way, let's say you're sailing and there are some sharks circling your boat. Keep an eye on them. If the predators suddenly leave you alone and head for deep water, it might mean a hurricane is drawing closer. Get back to dry land as fast as you can and warn others. If during a period of heavy rains, you hear a roaring sound, it might be a flash flood moving in your direction. If you're near a river at that moment, you might see debris coming down with the flow. The water can be changing its color and becoming cloudier and darker. These signs should set alarm bells ringing in your head. If your gut feeling is right, you have no time to waste. Try to get away from that place as fast as you can. Flash floods are often lethal. If you're out in the wild, pay attention to the water in creeks, streams, and rivers. If it's falling or rising rapidly, it might be a sign a landslide is about to happen. And if you see the water turn muddy, don't wait for more evidence. Get out of the area immediately. This is John. John seems to attract all kinds of bad weather and natural disasters wherever he goes. See for yourself. One day, John notices his dog is restless. The pooch keeps scratching the entrance door and wandering around the house. He even tries to hide in the corner, howling and barking. When some mugs start to clink in your cupboard, John realizes what it means. The noise is produced by foreshocks. Mini earthquakes leading up to the main event. Earthquakes often happen in clusters. After a few weak quakes, a much bigger one is likely to be on the way. Sometime before the disaster strikes, people might notice bizarre blue lights. Some of them seem to be coming out of the ground. Others are hovering in the air. These are earthquake lights. They may appear days or mere seconds before the ground starts shaking. Now, John is walking along the ocean shore. Suddenly, he sees the water retreat from the beach really, really fast. Uh-oh. John, run away as quickly as you can and find some high ground. A tsunami is coming. And your life might depend on how fast you react. If John spots a bizarre and unexpected rise in sea level, it can be another sign of an approaching tsunami. This happens in 40% of cases. The incoming water is the first tsunami wave. 
The second one, way, way larger, will come in in about 10 minutes. John can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami is near. Hmm. John feels there's something strange about the sun. Through his special super dark sunglasses, he sees that there's some uneven flares around the star's contour. If these bizarre rays are accompanied by auroras all over the world, they're a sign of a solar storm. Such storms are usually caused by disturbances in the sun's magnetic field. In this case, the bursts of gas and radiation on the surface of the sun get so massive and powerful that they can even reach our planet. Luckily, solar storms aren't really dangerous for people, but they can mess with electricity and even cause blackouts. The sky over John's head is darkening and turning ominously green. Something hits him on the forehead. Ouch! He picks up the offending object. It's a hailstone, but it's not that cold outside, and it's not raining. Soon, he hears some noise. It's approaching rapidly and turns into a loud roar. It sounds as if a freight train is moving towards him, but it's not a train. It's a tornado. The funnel isn't visible behind a cloud of debris, but John can't mistake this rotating column of air for anything else. Are you on the road, John? Then get as far away from your car as you can. Fast! Find a ditch, lie down in it, and cover your head. Oh, you're inside? Then get away from the windows and hide underground if possible. And please, John, be very careful if you spot some conically shaped clouds. Those mean severe storms. And if you notice that such a cloud starts spinning around, immediately search for shelter. The cloud is transitioning into a tornado right in front of your eyes. On the bright side, John should only worry about warm conical clouds. Cold ones are totally harmless. The only problem is to figure out the temperature of the cloud he sees. Duh! Ah, look. John just spotted some weirdly shaped trees. They look like the letter J and grow on a slope. It means the ground under John's feet is likely to be unstable. If he keeps wandering around, it can cause a bad landslide. Square waves appear when two different wave patterns crash into each other. This phenomenon does look kind of awesome. No, don't go into the water, John. Keep watching it from the shore. Cross currents in that spot can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the surface. John keeps walking along the shore. At one point, he sees wild, choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed. This time, he stays out of the water. He knows it can be a sign of a strong rip current. It can carry a swimmer far away into the ocean. How about a walk in the park? John likes this idea. The sun is shining and the sky is so blue and beautiful. Suddenly, he spots a rapidly growing vertical cloud. At first, it looks bright white. But as it approaches, alarmingly fast, it becomes dense and inky. The sky is darkening. It's getting windy. That's when the guy notices that his hair stands on end. It's his cue that he's about to get hit by lightning. At this very moment, positive charges are rising through his body. They're reaching towards the negatively charged part of the storm. If he doesn't react fast, these charges will meet. There's nowhere to hide, so John should crouch down and try to make himself smaller than the objects around him. Oh no, John, don't lie down on the ground. It may be damp and thus a great conductor of electricity. There are other signs that scream danger during a lightning storm. John's palms may begin to sweat. He might hear bizarre crackling and buzzing sounds coming from metal objects nearby. His skin can start tingling. There might be a strange metallic taste in his mouth. Plus, John is likely to smell chlorine. That's how ozone smells. Electrical charges split the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the main gases making up the atmosphere, into separate atoms. When these atoms come together again, some of them produce molecules made up of three oxygen atoms. That's ozone. We can smell it during a thunderstorm because downdrafts bring this gas from high altitudes to your level. Some bugs can feel a storm coming. They get ready for a natural disaster by freezing. So when John notices that insects around him look drowsy, he knows to get ready. Oh, and bees can predict heavy rainstorms. These critters begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining. While walking next to the river during a period of heavy rains, John hears a roaring sound. He feels paralyzed with fear. 
it's likely to be a flash flood moving in his direction. Indeed, he soon sees debris coming down with the flow. The water is rapidly changing its color, becoming muddier and darker. Flash floods are very, very dangerous. Take care of your safety immediately, John. Another day, John sees a spectacular wall cloud. It seems to be stretching for up to five miles. In the best case scenario, it's just a severe storm coming. But if the wall cloud begins to move in a circle, it's a sure sign of a tornado. John is walking across a snowfield in the mountains, listening to the sounds the ice under his feet makes. The noise is kinda hollow. Hmm. Quickly check whether there are cracks around your footprints, John. If so, the chances are an avalanche is about to happen. Soon, John sees an avalanche moving in his direction. He does his best to get off the slope. In most cases, he could probably outrun it by heading downhill and then veering sideways, but not this time. He realizes he doesn't have enough time and heads for the nearest tree. If John keeps holding on to it really tightly, the avalanche might not pull him along. But if this doesn't work, he should try to swim up to the snow's surface while the avalanche is still moving. On a pretty nice summer evening, John notices leaves with soft stems droop all of a sudden. Ah, it might be because of an upcoming storm. Right before extreme weather arrives, the air usually becomes more humid. Leaves also get damp and heavy, and the wind easily flips them over. John lives in a pretty old house and is used to having cracks in the interior walls. But one day, he notices that some of them have widened. And look, there are a few new ones. It's an alarm bell. He lives in an area with loads of limestone. So new cracks can mean a sinkhole is about to open next to his house. John is hurrying home, trying not to waste time admiring shelf clouds. They look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. And these ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. The moon, our little companion, our only friend in the big dark cold space. It's not surprising that any events related to it, like solar or lunar eclipses, excites us. But how about the black moon, the blue moon, a super moon? Have you ever heard of them? Well, let me tell you about it and how you can observe them. Let's get your calendars ready. The distance between the Earth and the Moon is 238,900 miles, I've measured. Feels not so far, doesn't it? But trust me, most people greatly underestimate this difference. Did you know that every planet in the solar system, including Jupiter and Saturn, would fit between the Moon and us? Yeah, I couldn't believe it myself. The Moon is tidally locked to the Earth. That's why it's always turned to us with only one side. There are a few phases in a lunar cycle. The new moon is the first phase. The sun illuminates the unseen side of our satellite, so we can't see the moon. It's almost invisible in the sky. The rising moon is the gradual growth of the light part. The full moon is the phase during which the sun completely illuminates the visible side. The descending moon is a gradual waning of the light part. And finally, another new moon. And the whole cycle starts again. There are 29 and a half days in a lunar cycle, so it takes around a month if we're not talking about February. But why am I telling you all this? So you can better understand Black Moon, a rare astronomical event that happens once every 29 months or two and a half years. This term doesn't exist in astronomy, as it was made up by astrologers. It's unofficial and has several meanings. Black Moon may mean the second new moon in a month. Usually, there's only one new moon per month, so having two is a rare phenomenon. It's caused by a slight discrepancy between the lunar cycle and the Earth's annual one, something like leap years. Black moon can also mean something else. For example, usually there are only three new moons per one season. Basically, one new moon every 30 days. However, if there are four, the black moon means the third one. There are also some less popular meetings. For example, that's what people call February without a new or full moon. This happens about once every 19 years. But what's so special about it? The satellite is wholly hidden in the sky during a regular new moon. But during a black moon, you'll be able to see its dark silhouette. You'll have to choose a good place without city lights. If you live in a big city, you'll hardly be able to see it without a telescope. Also, since the sky turns black during this phenomenon, 
you'll be able to see different constellations that were hidden before, as well as Jupiter and Venus. The last time this happened was on April 30th, 2022. You could observe it in most parts of the United States, except for areas in the Pacific, Alaska, or Hawaiian time. Aloha! Yeah, unfortunately, if this is the first time you hear about the black moon, you've already missed it. Now you'll have to wait another two and a half years. The next black moon will happen in September 2024 by standard definition and May 19th, 2023 by seasonal definition. But hey, don't worry, you can always see another astronomical event once upon a blue moon. Now, I'm not mocking you, I'm being serious. You can still see the blue moon. Well, not literally, of course. The moon won't turn blue. That's just what astrologers call the second full moon in a month. The black and blue moons are similar by definition, but they're actually the opposites. If the black moon is a rare second new moon in a month, the blue moon is a rare second full moon. They also both happen every 29 months. Not so rare, right? Kind of ironic that this event was called the blue moon. Folklorist Philip Hitchcock assumed that the calendrical meaning of the term blue moon was first invented by the Maine Farmer's Almanac in 1937. Now, another interesting astronomical event is called the supermoon. Stock up on telescopes and look for some hills, because you'll see an exceptionally bright and large moon, like the one we only see in movies. What exactly does a supermoon mean? You see, the moon doesn't revolve around the Earth in a circular orbit. Its orbit is elliptical, and the place where it's closest to the Earth is called perigee. A supermoon is a phenomenon that occurs when the full moon coincides with the perigee. Because of this, it seems to us especially large and bright. It looks 14% larger in diameter and 30% brighter than usual. By the way, this phenomenon is often confused with the so-called moon illusion. During the moon illusion, the moon is low above the horizon and visually appears larger in size. Of the 12 or 13 full moons in a year, three or four are supermoons. But most of them are not very significant. You probably won't see a difference at all. The most interesting ones are the rare large supermoons. During them, the moon actually becomes big. The last major supermoon occurred in 2016. Unfortunately, large-scale supermoons are rare and occur about once every 18 years. The next one will happen only in 2034. But we can observe smaller supermoons quite often. In 2022, they'll take place on June 14th and July 16th. There is also an opposite phenomenon called the micromoon. You've probably already guessed what that means. It happens when the full moon is at its farthest point from the Earth. This point is called apogee. The next micromoon in 2022 will take place on June 29th. In 2023, we'll be able to observe it on January 7th, February 5th, and August 16th. Of course, you don't have to follow each of these events. Most people are more interested in lunar and solar eclipses. By the way, are you one of the people who confuses these two events with each other? Test yourself. Pause this video, describe what these two eclipses mean, let's compare your answer with the correct definition. Are you back? Okay. So, a solar eclipse is a phenomenon where the moon entirely or partially covers the sun. A solar eclipse is possible only during the new moon when the moon itself is not visible. Many people believe that this event is incredibly rare, but this is not quite true. A lunar eclipse is a phenomenon in which the moon is entirely or partially in the shadow cast by the Earth. The lunar eclipse can only happen during the full moon when the proximity of the moon is on the node of its orbit. If you guess right, well done! If not, hey, don't worry, many people confuse them. In 2022, a partial solar eclipse will occur on October 25th. It'll be visible in Europe, South and West Asia, North and East Africa, and the Atlantic. As I mentioned, a total solar eclipse is not as rare as many people think, but the problem is that it's not always visible from any part of the planet. So, if you want to see this event, be sure to look for their calendar and see from which parts of the Earth you'll be able to see it. And don't forget the special glasses. Lunar eclipses occur much more often, though. Partial lunar eclipses happen almost every month. But the total lunar eclipse in 2022 will take place on the night of November 7th to 8th you'll be able to see it in almost all parts of the world except Africa. I hear that the zebras are not happy about this. The moon is a genuinely fascinating satellite. 
you think whatever is just a small rock ball. But in reality, there are so many interesting things connected to it. What rare lunar events have you seen or want to see in your life? Have you observed any rare and interesting astronomical events? Be sure to share in the comments!